Chris Heron, kind enough to join us. Chris, uh, sorry to hear the news about Coach, but uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say Jerry Tarkanian? You know, I, I look past the coach um, because he did so much for me off the court. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, will hear my story, and, and when they reflect on it, they they, they will say uh, Coach Tark enabled me, um, Fresno State enabled me, but they weren't in the office when he was, you know, crying, and, 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 and I was crying, and he was helping my family, trying to help me through it. Um, so his... His legacy to me transcends the game of basketball. It goes way beyond it. Um, you know, Coach Talk, there weren't many cooler coaches out there. Um, you know, he's an icon. He's a legend. But he really wasn't that cool. You know, he was just a regular <laughs> blue-collar guy who showed up to work every day in a sweatsuit. How did he find you, though, Chris, after, after BC? You know, it, it was it was well publicized. It was well publicized that I had left BC and he was starting over at Fresno State. So he thought it was a you know I was a I was an athlete out there. I was a kid who who had a lot of um, ability at that time to to uh, to sign um, a scholarship at Fresno with him. And and you look back on on those days, and and I know that you know your your addictions, your problems uh, resurfaced there, and uh, went. When's the last time you talked to Tark? I talked to him New Year's Eve. Um, he couldn't talk, um, so I just talked to him. Uh, you know, Danny, his son, who yeah. coached me at Fresno, um, wanted um, to connect his dad with people um, that cared about him and that he cared about. So I spent about uh, five minutes on the phone with him, just, just talking to him and thanking him for all he had done for me and my family and, uh, and how grateful I was to have play for him um so that was the last time and i was with him in fresno two years ago hmm. yeah i i likened him to robin hood that it seemed like he robbed from the rich to give to the poor that he took on the ncaa that he gave people chances second chances uh, that he believed in you when others didn't and uh you know I'm, I'm sure that that had to resonate with you and and fellow teammates as well it resonates with me today more so than it did then um i believe everybody has a comeback in them um, if I didn't, I wouldn't do what I do today. Um, you know, and he believed in me and, and I, and I hate to say it, um, but coach talk really believed when you told him you were doing well, he believed you. He wanted to believe you because in his heart, that's what he wanted. He wanted the best for his guys. He knew we didn't come from the best situation, the best family background, um, no kids walked on that campus with a silver spoon. Um, and he wanted them to be better. And, and in his heart, um, not only did he want to coach them, but he wanted kids to be successful after it. So he believed when you, when you were still, and I'm not sure what, what you were using at Fresno State when your addiction resurfaced there, but um, how, how often would you talk to him? And would he ask you if you're clean and then – he would. He wanted to believe that you were clean. Of course. Um, you know, I was struggling with cocaine. Um, you know, I was failing drug tests, and and you know, they gave me many opportunities to uh, to check into treatment centers or outpatient programs, and um, and I would do it. I would do it for a couple of days, and then, you know, sometime a couple of days, sometime a couple of months, and um, and he would believe me, and and then I would let him down. You know, as I said many times, I wish I was. Uh, I wish I was better for him, um, you know, but at that time in my life, a kid struggling with, with chemical dependency, with cocaine, you know, I gave him all I had when I had it, but there were many nights I didn't because of my issue. Talking to uh, Chris Heron, and, and Chris uh, tours the country giving uh, speeches, talking about addiction, and, uh, you know, somebody who had everything, at least on the uh, the surface, and realized didn't have much of anything, but uh, Chris has made uh, something great of his life and trying to help others joining us here on the Dan Patrick Show. I, I think what's also lost, though, Chris, is the Coach Tark and his ability to coach, like X's and O's, and that he could get kids to play defense, which is sometimes the hardest thing to get kids to uh, do. You know, when I when I first met Coach, I you know, I was uh, I, I was expecting to see this guy larger than life, and, and, and I walked into his office, and he was soft, and he was humble, and and I was expecting to play this aggressive offense and fly up and down the court and get up <laughs> shots. 
<laughs> and then I walked into his practice and I sat in a defensive stance for two and a half hours. <laughs> um, you know, he was about defense. That's what he was about. He said, if we can stop the ball, we can get out and run. Um, but, but we can't run if we can't stop. Uh, you know, he's, I don't know where he falls on the list, um, but I know 700 and something plus wins. And I think that's an amazing feat for a guy who had to do it at a program that he had to build. You know, he didn't land that Duke. He didn't land that Kentucky, UCLA, or Indiana. He built the programs he, he coached. And, uh, and to win that many games at schools like that uh, is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Uh- is there a website people uh, can find out where you're touring, Chris? Uh, we, we appreciate you joining us. I know you're giving a speech uh, this morning in New Jersey, but is there a, a website that they can go to? Yeah, I'm, um, you know, the Heron Project is, uh, is the website people can go to. That's, that's the, uh, the foundation that I had set up to assist families who can't afford treatment, um, you know, and give them, a, give them a second chance like Coach Todd gave me. And, and give people I, – I, I bring this story up when I, I tell people about you that, I mean, you were a great, great athlete, great player. Um, but the whole Boston Celtic thing that here you were – and this is in the documentary, The Unguarded, that was the 30 and 30 uh, on ESPN. But you're with the Celtics, your hometown team. And then it turned out to be the worst thing that happened to you because you're getting high and you're trying to play in the NBA. I was taking 1,600 milligrams of Oxycontin. I was spending 25000 a month on a pill um, that I was introduced to a year earlier. Uh, you know, I was, I was hostage to, uh, to prescription medication, and, um, and I was playing for the Boston Celtics. Could it, you, was an absolute, it was an absolute, absolute nightmare. Could you play um, high, though, Chris? You know, it's funny you ask. It's, it, I never played high. Um, I, played on the, I played with the medication in me. Uh, with the pills in me, um, but but I couldn't play unless I had it. It wasn't it wasn't like I was blown out. I was just I was it made my body okay to run, and that's 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 how cunning and powerful it is. Um, because if I didn't have it, um, there was no playing, and my body wouldn't be able to go. The Heron Project, H uh, E R R E N. Chris Heron, former Fresno State guard. Chris, uh, always great to catch up with you, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Say hello to Paulie for me. I will, Chris. Uh, all right. Thank you. Take care. All right, Chris Heron.